Nice chat. Okay. What are you doing on Fraser Island? Working. What do you work as? By chance, anything related to the English language? Food and beverage. What? Look, Chloe. I'ma be blunt. I could yell into a ravine and the echo I would hear could hold a better conversation than this. Yikes! But also exceedingly accurate! God, dating apps are for people who just don't want to try it feels like. But man, that's exceedingly accurate! So many people out there just cannot hold a conversation. It's... This is just... This is just good. This is just a good insult. It is accurate, topical, and fits with what they're trying to do, which is hold a conversation. I'll rate this one 5 out of 10. That's a passing grade. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Calvis! My name is Lumo, and today we are looking at r slash rare insults, a subreddit where I get some of my most inspiring bouts of creativity from. It's dedicated to insults that are rarely heard or brand new, and we get to watch them be birthed into the world. Let's just get right into it. So people really out here putting hot sauce in the fridge? The back of the bottle literally says refrigerate after opening and y'all still put it in the cabinet. Y'all don't follow directions and that's why y'all keep getting pregnant. Guys, like this post if you too are like me and unfortunately uh, subjected to Mpreg. Wow, that's, oh, that's that's a rough one. First of all, yes, refrigerate your goddamn hot sauces. You wanna know what, like, this, like absolutely boggles my foggin' is just the fact that, like, things that say refrigerate after opening, I've seen people not refrigerate. I have been to people's houses where they have open jars of marinara, and it says in big letters, refrigerate after opening, and it's just sitting there half full in the cabinet. What are you doing? What caused your frontal lobe to be separated from the rest of your brain? Where did it go? Well, y'all think this room smells like freaking bean looking lady in the bottom left there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. is that the camera lens perspective? That doesn't. Oh, my God, though, like that has that has to be perspective. Also, I have been in rooms packed with people. Rooms packed with people do not smell good, regardless of what's going on. I'm just going to put that out there now. But like, why does she look like the Galaxy Buds Pro, you know, like the, the beans? The bean headphones? I have to question, are we going to see a review on Dank Pods of this lady? I have to, I have to question. I, I that has to be perspective though. Like her, her face is too convex. Like anatomically, that makes no sense. So that's gotta be like a camera perspective of some sort. My Navy buddy constantly jokes about how I'm just a civilian. We got into a debate and ended it on an agree to disagree. Well, you're entitled to be that way. I fight for those freedoms after all. The only thing you've ever fought is the urge to masturbate in public. Oh! <laughs> is that why he joined the Navy in the first place to clear his criminal record of public indecency? Oh my God, that is, that's not an insult. You just pulled out a gun and just took him out. That, like, that's the end of the man. You, ac you actually just obliterated, removed, destroyed to atoms, to dust, they are gone. God, that, that's brutal. But then again, it's like a certain YouTuber whose name I won't say, to avoid giving them any more publicity, uh, saying that they were in the military when they couldn't even last a week in boot camp. It's like, it has that same energy of, I did something which means I am deserving of your praise, even though in reality they've not done much of anything at all. In this case specifically, like if you have time to have this text conversation and you've got an ego about it, like, you probably haven't seen the action yet. Gwen looks like she gets nutrients by burning orphans. What? What am I looking at? What? What am I looking at? I'm actually having a big, a really big issue here. Was this like an actual episode? Like the title of this post is what even was this episode? So I have to assume that this was a real episode and like I need to talk about like Potemkin Uncle Ben with what appears to be a scrote bulge, which immediately raises some concerns. Uh, Gwen, of course, does look like she gets nutrients by burning orphanages, but like, what's happening to my man Ben over there? What's got him? Why is his tens getting so stretched out like that? Like, why does he look like he's turning into like one of the tech deck mascots? Like, what's happening? Why is the all? Why is the all? That's probably the best question. Why is the all? James Corden is the most worked with the robots to betray the humans and get put back together into the Matrix as a famous active person who has ever existed. Look, I'm not saying you're illiterate, but a comma, a period, and anything would help me parse your sentence, you absolute cave painting monobrow. Like, please. You went to school, you went through English class. I'm so sick. I'm so tired. I am so tired, dude. A comma. Anything. Please. This owner looks like he'd really take enjoyment out of being a Discord moderator. The owner is the type of guy who spends money on his wife's boyfriend. Oh, uh, wait. 
I think I've seen this episode. If I remember correctly, this was a completely mismanaged hotel where everything was wrong and it was like this beautiful like old building and these idiots were running it into the ground because they were living it as like a flight of fancy. It was such a train wreck. Honestly, Gordon Ramsay showing up is the best thing that ever happened because finally that house saw any sort of action because it basically never got rented as the hotel that it was. Man, man, it's weird when I get a reference. Jake Paul gets called a dog in a clever way. He's trying to intimidate him, but he looks nervous. He looks like one of those dogs that box when you knock on the door and then runs away when you come in. If I understand correctly, he's actually been doing a decent amount of fights, but like, still, uh, he's got the same amount of confidence I do after eating nothing but like cheese and then going to the bathroom, you know what I mean? He's got the look of a man who is in the state of like Schrodinger's sh where he either has to crap or doesn't. And he can't tell what's about to happen. And he is just praying. He is just praying he makes it in time. That's what that face reads to me. The determination to not shit yourself while also being convinced that it's about to happen. Why does this film have the color palette of a body that's been dumped in a river? No, that's a genuine question. I've always questioned this. These films are so artistically bland as far as color goes. Like I've only ever seen like the trailers and a couple of shots uh, because you know, these came out when I was in high school. Like I, I, I of course dated a girl who was into them. Thankfully, avoided ever watching them. But still, I always had to ask, why is this like all blue? Like, is this what film directors think Maine looks like in the same way that the gold filter is what Mexico looks like? Like, what, what was the point of the blue? Was it just to make the entire movie even more depressing for everyone in the audience? There are flat earth videos with more convincing proof than this. That is an insult. I was talking about this with one of my friends last night and like she made a good point that like these people start reasonable, but it's only a matter of time until you get to the point where Obama was the one who ironed the earth flat. <laughs> like it, it's such a weird concept. Like it is the slippery slope when you're talking with a conspiracy theorist. It is amazing. And it also makes for a wonderful insult. You look like the bad guy in a Lifetime Network movie! Oh, oh sweet Jiminy Christmas. Oh, Sproingus my boingus. That is, that is such a good insult. That's such a good description. And the fact that the background is like monochrome alongside the vibrant color palette really do have that cheap villain feel where they wanted to make it feel industrial. But they only had the one set on their budget and they are going to have to stretch that for the entire movie. <laughs> I love finding houses for sale that look like they were decorated by someone who's cheated in The Sims. Oh, <laughs> I've seen so many of these. I'm not in the market to buy a house. I'm very poor, but I like looking because I think it's just interesting and there's a lot of neat houses. I've seen some funny ones like a shack for $40,000. I've seen other ones that are like, uh, this house has to be haunted. You are not selling me like a lakeside property for like 100K, that's not happening. But it's like so many houses look like they just dropped right out of the revolutionary period and never aged. And I'm like, does this even have electricity or is that chandelier gas powered? Like what's going on here? I mean this in the nicest way, but your dog looks like- <laughs> Oh, I love this post. I mean this in the nicest way, but your dog looks like it has the ghost of a cursed Victorian era child ritually bound to it. Good pup. God, the image that that quote came from was from a pug staring off into the ephemeral void as though the life had just been sucked from its face and it had seen the ghost of the man who had killed it and bound its body to the soul of a dog. Like, it was a visceral, like, panic reaction on that thing's face. And like, this dog's got the same thing, and you know what? I'm glad to see that the uh, ghost child has inhabited a far more mobile body. Good for them. I spent 6K in over 40 hours building my 100% movie accurate group costume. You know, all the idiots in my office can't stop emailing about Shannon's dumbass toddler BS baby Groot costume that honestly looks like a third in a marshmallow. I hate to say it, but unfortunately babies have a biological advantage. We're pre-programmed to love them because they're the future of our species. And if we don't, well, then we don't have much of a future, huh? But at the same time, I definitely agree. That's complete putt sauce. But given the fact that you just spent 6K on what basically amounts to a wooden fursuit, I would imagine you have a secondary and tertiary option. 
This wasn't for the office party. You're either going to Comic-Con or some sort of stag party. And that's all the time we have here today on Calabas. If you like this, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, maybe share this with a friend who could use some creativity when you're insulting them. Or rather when they're insulting you. I don't claim to be smart, I claim only to be sexy. If you want more r slash rare insults, there'll be another one popping up on your screen in just a couple of seconds. But until then, my name has been Lumo, and I hope to see you in the very next Calabas video. Have a great rest of your day.